Hello viewers, welcome to UKN TV. Today's program, we are celebrating the life of a very special lady. Professor Wangari Madai is a global phenomenon in her absence. As she rests in peace, we had people from all over the place, but the guest, Prince Charles at Kew's Garden planting a tree to honor the life of Wangari Madai was just major. Greenbelt Movement made sure that they organized an event that is going to be felt globally, represented by people from America, people from China, people from Africa, and to have Prince Charles as a guest at this event was huge. And viewers, we are going to hear Prince Charles sending his tribute for Wangari Madai, talking to the people of the world of how you can care for your environment, because if we don't, then who will? Welcome to the program and I hope you enjoy it. Your Royal Highness, Lords, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and uh, special friends, I am delighted to welcome you to the Royal Botanic Gardens queue for this very special memorial ceremony celebrating the life and the work of Professor Wangarai Mathai. We were very pleased when the Greenbelt Movement first approached us at queue to propose queue as the venue for this very special event. Wangarai Mathai was a courageous and inspirational pioneer of the environmental movement. She campaigned in particular for the vital importance of trees. The work and the spirit of the Greenbelt Movement and Q is closely linked. And I'm very proud to say that the Greenbelt Movement is working extremely closely with Q, with Q's Millennium Seed Bank, to ensure that the right species are planted in the right places. she showed to speak out, the strength to stand up to criticism and to live with fear of reprisal and even assassination, the selflessness to fight for those with less access to power, and the clarity and in integrity to know what was right and what was wrong. Prof's presence was felt wherever she went, whether it was within small groups of people or whether it was on the public platform. She never lost sight of the reason why it was important to gain human rights human dignity and equality of opportunity for those so often overlooked. In 2004, when Prof was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, her life changed forever. Everyone wanted a bit of her. 
It was a chance for her wisdom and experience to be shared. Some of us here met with her in a hotel room in Paris where we thought strategically about how we could um, share her message but also how she would survive from the deluge of invitations and demands on her time. For the next few years, Prof traveled the world, speaking at international events, going in and out of hundreds of airports, sleeping in hundreds of different of hotels. It was a, both, a, I suppose, an inspirational, a rewarding, but very tiring time. And I would say sometimes quite lonely, uh, certainly being away from her beloved Kenya. So we're here today to celebrate that life, <coughs> that determined woman with a world vision and a smile which was so totally memorable. And also to, to ensure that the organization she founded, the Greenbelt Movement, continues to thrive and shows us all how to live in harmony and peace without destroying the very nature we need in order to sustain ourselves and everyone else. My mother would have really loved to be here, mainly to see you all and to commune with her old friends and supporters and to express her gratitude, Your Royal Highness, for your commitment to environment, climate change and to the forests of the world. It's therefore for us an immense tribute that you are here, Your Royal Highness, and you honor us with your presence today. And so, in good Kenyan fashion, I want to say Asante Sana for being here. I was moved really to tears because I realized that for most of you, only a year ago, we were really in the depths of, of, uh, of mourning and, and sadness. Her family, her friends, her colleagues, all of you, we went through a most difficult transition. It was really dark, but at the Greenbelt Movement, the same was happening. We were going through a very difficult time. And the staff were looking to the board for direction. It was almost like, I love choirs. It was almost like that choir without a master. And as a board in Kenya, we spent a lot of time just thinking about the way forward because we knew for sure if one thing was certain, we had to go on and we had to go on strong and we had to do Wangari proud. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we have the greatest opportunity dare I say even responsibilities, to ensure that the work Wangari started continues, thrives, and captures the imagination of the youth in our communities. We know what she stood for and how much she wanted this planet to be a better place and inspire people to action. It was a united effort for peace with justice and e equality to amplify the good work that the w these women were doing. My mother loved the camaraderie she shared with these women. And I know that she knew that in their collective work would come an impact that would make a difference for all of them. In my mother's last years, she spent a lot of her time and energy, really the last two years, in creating the Wangari Mathai Institute to focus on peace and environmental studies. It was critically important to her that the work of the Greenbelt Movement be anchored within an institution of higher learning. That the Greenbelt Movement's lessons and the, what we had done for the last 30 years needed to be shared faster and broader. And that the best way we could do that was to build capacity of the young people who are going through our institutions of higher learning. This legacy project aims to pioneer a very bold ed educational path that is anchored in experiential learning and sharing of best practices. A place where both academics and communities can connect as they seek to transform communities at the center of this work. My mother always told me that no matter what you do in life, nothing will give you more satisfaction than serving others. You have our commitment to continue working every single day to ensure that this legacy lives on. And I thank you so much for joining us in this journey. Thank you.
But can I say, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm, I'm so pleased um, to be able to join you here today just to pay a um, very special tribute to dear Wangari Maathai, someone I admired and loved. In fact, we um, ended up on hugging terms. Uh, <laughs> but so very greatly indeed, uh, I admired her, and whose loss we continue to mourn regularly, and uh, whose remarkable legacy we celebrate, uh, namely the Green Belt Movement that continues, thank God, to have a lasting impact on the planet. Now, I first met Wangari with Wangira, as she mentioned just now, at uh, my home in Highgrove. And uh, when I met her that time, my heart went out to her at once. And I always so enjoyed um, and valued our meetings over the following years, whether in London, uh, in Copenhagen for the 2009 uh, UNFCCC summit, or indeed elsewhere. And as you all know, Wangari uh, had the most wonderful and infectious spirit. And the room would light up in her, her presence. And her optimism and her deep sense of hope, uh, in addition to her uproarious laugh and her brimming smile, could not but fail to win uh, people's affection. Wangari spoke um, so unbelievably eloquently uh, of the Green Belt Movement's remarkable achievements over uh, the past 40 years, not just on the natural environment and uh, the sheer numbers of trees planted, 51 million and counting, I think, which is, of course, extraordinary, but also with respect to her work to promote the well-being of uh, African women across the continent, to foster peace and democracy in her homeland, Kenya, and uh, across the continent, and to reduce poverty. As I said on that uh, really awful day in 2011, Wangari's understanding of the link between human poverty and the quality of the natural environment undoubtedly influenced a generation of environmentalists and policymakers. It is, I think, no underestimate to say that um, her death was a profound tragedy for her family, for those who knew her and loved her, and above all, for the whole planet. However, we, we can take some heart from the fact that her legacy in the form of the Green Belt Movement will continue. And I am determined that my organizations will work in partnership with you whenever they can, whether that is on the crucial issue, for instance, of building consensus and action on the challenges of water, food, and and energy security in different countries and regions of the world, or looking at the problem of land banking in developing countries. Uh, the thing I always thought was amazing about Wangari Mathai was that everywhere you saw her, whether it was talking to an enormous audience or with a small group of people, she always knew exactly what to say and how to capture the imagination and to capture the hearts of the people she was talking to. She was an amazing lady. So the spirit is still there. Then we continue all of us and all of a lot of people to continue the planting trees and the action and the all things. I, I remember as if she's here with us right now in spirit and somebody with an amazing heart and brilliance great energy and um, some if anyone was the mother earth embodied it was Wangari Matai and she has such a great lesson for us as humanity in understanding a holistic perspective where peace security and sustainability are one and the same and I think that's our greatest challenge and um, I think she has had a, a great mission uh, with her life on earth and it's so important for all of us to continue that.
a big occasion for us, <clears throat> especially those who started the Green Belt Movement in 1977. And we feel honored that you can remember our founder member who really did a lot to start this movement and the movement has spread all over the world. I'll read a little bit of uh, what she used to say and what she used to remember. We are all part of the nature. I remember something somebody said, that except for the, our energies, which we could be the soul, our bodies have sometimes been the trees, the water, old animals. We do not know what we have been in the past. We are part of each other. We are kind of get recycled. So we come down to primary elements. There is actually no difference. When, when we get into our various species, we look different, but we all still comprise of the same element. For me, that's what Gary used to say, because we really do not understand where we did come from or where we're going, Sorry. <laughs> Where are we going? What is the purpose of all this? We look at the trees and the animals and look at each other. We conclude that there is a pattern that we are all very much apart, but we are really do not we really do not control. I am very much aware that I cannot live without the green trees. I am harbored by the understanding that. They, they can do very well without me. <laughs> and I'm harbored by the fact that they sustain me and not the other way around. Professor Wangari was very, very much uh, in her own culture. She respected her own, she sincerely respected her own culture. And she also felt that Whatever she's doing, she also have to have the spiritual intake. <laughs> It was very nice to see here the remembrance of Wangari Madai here at the Kew Gardens. So how do you feel today after this memorable event? I think uh, this was a very great day. It was a very great day because uh, we are all gathered here to remember the memory of uh, our late uh, Professor Wangari Madai who spent all her life trying to protect our, our environment. It is uh, very clear that uh, Professor Wangari Madai, during her time in Kenya, she was kind of uh, ahead of most of our people because all the battles that uh, she actually fought in trying to protect some of the forests, like for example the Karura Forest, quite a lot of people never understood exactly what she was doing. But uh, she herself was ahead of our time in that she realized how important it was uh, to protect uh, trees and uh, to protect the environment because uh, that was part of nature and we needed nature and the environment to be able to enjoy our life in this world. Oh, 
just planting more trees and getting, getting everybody really interested. That's all I can say. Um, my mother was her uh, classmate, so I met her. Uh, I met her in Kenya um, a few years ago, and was just you know, I'm very impressed by the kind of woman she was and the kind of work she's done. Read her book Unbound, and really Kenyans should take note because they're losing their valuable resources and all the land grabbing that's going on and deforestation. It would just lead to economic chaos for the country. Viewers, the work of Professor Wangari Madai will continue because Kenyans are making sure that the Greenbelt movement is also very strong at this time in her absence. We're talking to Njeri Gakonyo, who is the Greenbelt Movement Kenya board chair. I would like you to tell us what does this event mean to Greenbelt Movement and friends of Wangari Madai? It means that people still remember Professor Madai. They remember the work that she did, the kind of inspiration she brought to us all to understand that we are linked to the environment. There is no way we can divorce ourselves from the environment and we need to look after it. And we need to link that to issues of peace and issues of governance. And it's wonderful that we have had this commemoration today of Professor Madai's life and her work. And especially to have Prince Charles come and speak as he did and remember the connection that he felt to Professor Madai and the work that she was doing and the work that they did together. And for us as the Green Belt Movement, it means a great deal for this event to happen today um, in a country that is far from our own, which shows the kind of global reach that she had. And in Kenya, we have also had commemorative events of Professor Madai. And indeed, the work continues. Green Belt Movement is alive and well, and you'll be hearing a lot more from us in coming days. We've had Professor Wangari Madai in the past being out there in the limelight. How will the Green Belt Movement move without Wangari? What is the future for the Green Belt Movement? Green Belt Movement has a great future. I really, it's the kind of thing where you say, watch this space. When you've worked with Professor Madai and felt her dedication, to the work that she was doing and her dedication to Kenya and her dedication to humanity as large, you can't help but feel fueled to feel like this is energy for you as well. So for us as Greenbelt, we're so committed. We have a strategy that's looking at Kenya's water towers. Where is our water going to come from? Everybody needs to think about this. Where is your fresh water going to come from? And we need to conserve our forests, to restore them fully, and to make sure that they function. We're all in this together, folks. We have to work together. And the Green Belt Movement has a great future. You will be hearing from us. The young people, where are they left in all this? The young people are not left at all. <laughs> The young people are the center of this and as the Green Belt Movement we're creating innovative programs to link with the young people because if they understand what the links are and they're the ones who will carry these things forward and if they catch them when they're young, like the young children you saw here today, if they know how to talk about this environment and me, we're linked and it's the same work that we're doing across primary schools, secondary schools in Kenya and indeed we're looking for them to come up. These are the little Wangari Madais that will be there in the future. Viewers, the trees are dying, global warming all over the place and you talk about the life of Wangari Madai has to be in vain? No, I don't think so. The former president of North Island, the first female president, Mary Robinson, did have an inaugural speech regarding Wagari Mathai. And she did talk about how we can work together to making sure that that work has been taken into place by each one of us. Is it the curriculum? Can we include climatic change in the curriculum globally? Is it the social media? Can we help the young people be very active in the, in the media, in the social media, talking about how we can protect the environment? The list is endless of what we can do, but as Mary Robinson says, the work has not finished. Greenbelt Movement is working with other parties to make sure that Wangari Zamadai's work stay on focus. I liked her from the beginning. There were three things, I think, that particularly struck me about her. The first was her brilliant smile. It seems a small thing, but any of us that remember Prof remember that brilliant, brilliant smile. You can see it there on the uh, photograph. The others were her spirituality, which was really very striking, and her indomitable, indomitable spirit. 
18 months after her death, Wangari remains and will continue to be that symbol for those of us lucky enough to have known her personally and for millions of others. The Green Belt Movement has gone from strength to strength with its main office in Kenya, but with satellite offices in the United States and here in London for Europe. I realized that severe weather shocks were already undermining poor livelihoods in vulnerable countries in Africa and were negatively affecting rights to food, safe water, and health. I used to describe it as the ah, but sentence, the sentence that began, ah, but things are so much worse. We don't have seasons anymore. When I was growing up in North Kenya, my, uh, North Uganda, my friend Constance O'Kellett would tell me, we had food because we know, knew when to sow and when to harvest. Now we have long periods of drought and then flash flooding. In Liberia, the rainy seasons are no longer predictable. There were two very predictable <coughs> rainy seasons. Now the rainy season may come, it may last whatever length. And in Malawi, a country that I was in um, in January, there is much more severe drought in one part, much more severe flooding in another, and all of it undermining livelihoods, undermining um, security. I concluded that this posed one of the greatest human rights threats and it had a huge injustice dimension and needed to be highlighted by taking a climate justice approach. The injustice is that there is very clear disconnect in a way between who is affected and who is responsible. The most vulnerable communities are those least responsible. It's a very harsh reality. Sadly, Wangari was called to sleep too soon. But her inspiration and her legacy live on in the Green Belt movement and in the many like me who have been supported and encouraged in our work by her leadership and her spirit. May she continue to inspire millions more and encourage the political will for change that was at the heart of her mission. Thank you very much. alive with us because her work is still going to go huge and huge as many countries engage with the Green Belt movement. What are you going to do? We would like to ask you for the memories of Professor Wangari Madai, plant a tree in your garden, plant a tree. If you own land, plant trees. Yes, because this way we will save the environment. We don't want to talk about our great grandchildren living in a world where the climate has destroyed everything we love. <laughs>